Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Thank you for joining us this evening. Today with me, I have Robert DiMadura, and I hope I didn't butcher that one too badly. He's the Libertarian Tre- no. Solano County Libertarian Party Treasurer. Man, that's, we gotta we have to shorten our names, man. It's a long names to say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, well, welcome with me this evening, Robert. So we've been we're sitting here talking about backstage about uh, kind of the economic impact that we're seeing today in the state. And so I stopped you right in the middle of your thing. Can you kind of want to back us up and start? You were disappointed about what's going on. So I just want to hear your opinion. Well, yeah, you you know, we were kind of talking about what's been going on. Well, um, that, that that is a pretty, pretty significant what has been going on. But I think what's most important right now is what's continuing to go on. Um, we still haven't opened up our state yet. We have people that are scared of a virus that's, neg- you know, it's almost, you know, it's almost benign, relatively benign. Like, I mean, okay, it's like, you know, the flu kills people. And I know it's not the flu. People say it injures uh, people in a different way. It's, it, it, it spreads faster. I get that. But the mortality rate is actually a lot less than the flu. And we were, we were approaching, I don't know if you know, but we were approaching maybe what, was like 60,000 or 40,000 flu deaths or something coming into this for, from the last season, they were, they were about to call the flu an epidemic before this. Yeah. I found out. So, um, well, I'm, I'm glad that it's not as bad as they said it was bottom line. I I'm ecstatic about that. And I'm glad that we're not losing millions. Um, like they, we might. Yeah. The early data looked bad, right? It was bad data, but it was the best data we had. And it looked like it could have been something really scary. And so, you know, you right. can kind of understand the initial reaction. You, you can get it. But now we know can kind of, from kind of worldwide data that in a modern country whose healthcare system doesn't get overwhelmed, and that's the important part, if, you're, if the healthcare system doesn't get overwhelmed, the mortality rate is somewhere between 0.1 and 0.7 and likely under 0.3, right? But because the data is so freaking bad, it's hard to tell, right? So, right. so we'll leave it there. We'll leave that there. <laughs> You know, if the data is really freaking bad, the way they're collecting it, you have Japan deliberately undercounting it. You've got the United States deliberately overcounting it. So it's really almost impossible to tell where the actual numbers are. So, you know, a half a percentage point range is huge when you're talking about a scale of 300 million people. But at the same time, you're talking, it's most likely somewhere about 0.3, 0.1, depending upon your specific and your specific population and where you're at. Right. I think New York, they're reporting up to 0.5. Okay. You can have it. 0.5. Fine. Yeah. But New York is a specific place. They're a high density. They're, they're relying on public transportation and their healthcare system strains on a regular day. Right. And so they have kind of those conditions where this type of thing can actually impact greater. But yeah. up in, yeah. my heart goes out to them too. You know, that's that's yeah. it sucks seeing those. You know, seeing them, they're 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 going through it, and you know, there are people dying and there are people suffering, and I hope that everyone is getting the proper care that they should be getting. Yeah, and, but we actually have to go to everybody else. I heard a story today about how hospitals are starting to lay staff off because they're actually starting to lose money because of not getting enough patients and. I personally have a few friends that have been laid off that are nurses and, you know, I, I would have never thought you, I would ever hear that. Right. Have you ever heard of nurses being laid off ever? No, ever? In, a, in a pandemic, in a healthcare pandemic, we have nurses being laid off. We've done something wrong. There's some fundamental I, something we've kind of done wrong. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and, and, but, but to treat a highly dense populated area, the same way as you treat say Shasta County or even Solano County, where it has a lot of rural areas, it doesn't seem to be kind of kind of right. It seems to me like we should have a smarter approach to this, especially at this point when we say, hey, we maybe we dodged a bullet. That's great. We flip and dodged a bullet. Right. You know, it's time to start working our way back into the supply chains getting open and start getting our way back to work. Right, right. And, and if I could say, you know, I, I get it why they did that. But from day one, I was advocating like, hey, guys, let's take a step back. I think martial law is a little harsh, you know. You know, let's figure out what this is, what's going on, and then we can destroy our economy if it calls for it. But now we have people that died in vain and we destroyed our com- our, our economy, you know? So we have like it was we added insult to injury. And I and I was hoping that that wouldn't happen. I, I you know, 
And that's that. You know, I want to leave it there. I was just hoping that we could we didn't do that. But that's yeah, well, pretty normal. That seems like what is happening now is like we're adding insult to injury. Instead of coming out and saying, hey, we dodged a bullet, let's start working on our way and getting on getting things back open, on getting back and on start recovering. Instead, we're saying, well, we're going to stay closed for three more weeks or whatever he went out and said today, which is going, the data doesn't support it. You know, maybe there's a location that may need to stay closed longer, but for the whole state to stay closed for three more weeks, the data isn't actually supporting that anymore. Yeah, and so I just had a thought. Would you ever, would you ever tell someone, you know, after they recover from surgery that, you know, they've recovered, right? They're in, they're in, you know, they're in the ICU or whatever, they're, they've recovered in their room and, you know, Hey, you're healthy. You're you're doing good. We can you can you can get back home. You know, would you ever tell them? Well, we're just gonna keep you. There's no real reason. We just think something might happen. Like, you know, would you wouldn't you wouldn't stop them from going home? You would you would send them home. Yeah, you know? especially if your models have already proven wrong, right? If you've already been right. proven, oh, my diagnosis was wrong. We almost we kind of oh, we started your surgery. We didn't actually need it, so we stopped. We put you back together. We're gonna send you home. You know, we, our diagnosis is wrong. We didn't know. You know, it, it happens, right? That kind of thing right. actually happens. And you, you don't want to throw anybody under the bus because they did the best they can on the diagnosis with the information they had. Absolutely. But, Absolutely. Because we are all in this together, for yeah. sure. But we can't start throwing them under the bus now for not noticing, hey, you're, the data isn't supporting what, you're, what you've done. And so now why aren't you starting to, not necessarily backtrack, why aren't we starting to kind of start to fix it instead of saying yeah. we're going to continue on? Let's move forward. Absolutely. That's the number one thing I, I'd like to see right now. If I could, if I could see anything, well, the thing that would make me the happiest would to see tomorrow that Gavin Newsom says, hey, we're going to open up on the first. We got it wrong. I appreciate you guys, uh, you know, for for staying on top of it, uh, you know, and and. And that's pretty much it. You know, I, I would like I would like to see us open up on the first. I don't see any reason why not to. Am, am I missing something? <laughs> you know? well, yeah, it seems from us. And if there is some data that's back there that's that's telling him that he should be staying closed, if there's some data, then why aren't we hearing it? Because we're not hearing the kind of data that says we should be closed. But yes. speaking of the first, there's protests planned up and down the state. I know there's rumors of a protest here in, in Sacramento at the Capitol. You know, I don't want to go too far. I don't want to say too much because you know the the lords of the social media are crampling down on that kind of stuff. But so what's your kind of feelings on the protesters? I think we need to be out there. I think Rosa Parks, this bitch. I'm sorry. Excuse my language. But we're a podcast. You, know, you can do that. We're not on <laughs> right, cool, right. Right. access today. You're good. All right. Mm -hmm. Cool. Right on. Good. Yeah. No, I think we need a Rosa Parks, this bitch, man. I mean, it doesn't make sense. The numbers don't make sense. We have to do what we have to do. Freedom's not free. And, you know, oppressors will never give away, you know, an, an, an oppressed freedom, you know? Yeah. So we just have to stand up and, and uh, set an example for our brothers and sisters. And it doesn't take a huge percentage of the population to do it. 100 people, 100 percent of the people don't have to do it, guys. Only a small, a very small percentage of people just need to be vigilant. And that's all it takes. We yeah. can 3 percent of the population can save 100 percent of the population. Yeah, and there's other ways you can support. If you're someone who's maybe you're worried about your job, if you go out and support the protests, so you don't want to go out and support the protests um, officially, you know, you don't want to actually go out there, you're afraid of getting arrested or something. Now, there's other ways. There's other, yeah, it's understandable. And there's other ways that you can help. Like, I think there's a lot of parking issues around these places where people are looking for place, safe places to park their cars just in case they get arrested. And there's people looking for logistics help so you can drive people to and from their cars. So you don't actually have to get physically at the protest to actually help out the protesters. I think that's one of the things we should get at the points we can get across is, you know, there's, you can help. You can just, even just sharing, if someone's recording a live video, sharing a live video is because yeah. it's getting shut down all across, all across the social media. And we have to get through the algorithms. And the only way to do that is to kind of force your way through them. Yep. Yep. I could I could give you some of my techniques, but <laughs> they, they, I, I stumbled upon them on accident. But, you know, they, they work, you know, it's just really it's just being involved. That's it. Saying yeah. stuff and commenting and and being and just being a part of things is is, is kind of how you do it. And a lot of it, too, is you go on these big pages that, that post. If you can be the first one, you can be the first one to comment. There, that's that's I just gave it away right there. Just saying. Yeah, get the find your posts early, get the first one to comment. Yeah, 
there's all kinds of techniques to get our voice out there. And I think it's important right now that, you know, people like herself who are normally kind of thinking maybe we should become more involved. Maybe we should start having our voices. You know, now if you, if now is not the time to have your voice. If you are feeling that, right. If people are feeling that, like they want to do that, there's a reason for that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's deep. It's, it's spiritual almost. There's a reason for that. And if you don't do that, there's a chance that you will experience what, what people call self-deception and and it's not a good feeling if you feel like you got to do it you probably should who knows you know i mean be as safe as you as you feel you need to be don't go you know don't go put yourself in harm's way or anything like that but you know if you feel like you need to stand up and and there's something fishy going on you know there probably is and there's a lot yeah and there's a lot of ways to get your voices we have community podcasts like this one you can call on podcasts you can share you can find a a local official or a local leader doesn't have to be an official a local leader who, who's saying some something similar to what you believe in and just share their post you know there's a lot of little ways you can actually use your voice and so i think that's important especially for in a time today where there's so much um toxicity especially with you know the the karens and everybody's using the word karens and people are <laughs> yeah. on each other and you know yeah, I, I dislike the term, but I understand why, you know, you have to create a label and, and you know, who knows why well, it means. Personally, so every time I use it, I'm like, I'm sorry, Karen, I don't, I'm not talking about you. Not yeah, my I, Karen. I, you know, my camp, I have a campaign staffer who's named Karen. It's like, no, she's the nicest woman in the world. Why, you know, <laughs> but at the same time, it's not about an individual. It's kind of, yeah, it's, but at the same time, it, there's a reason that there's people have wanting to express this type of feeling. It's people are feeling oppressed. And you've got this one group of, it's essentially nanny staters who want to tell you how to live your life because they're in fear. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, I mean, I just go back to the founding fathers with that. You know, if you give it, if you're willing to give up security, I'm sorry, liberty for security, you'll get neither. You don't get either. If, you know, you don't get security nor freedom if you're willing to give up freedom for security. You don't get it. You just yeah, you, and you, end up, yeah. you end up living in fear your whole entire life, right? You end up. That's what happened in the Soviet Union. There's a reason they drank out so much alcohol. It's because you know when you have to when you have to fool yourself every day, you have to drown yourself. There's no, you know, the human spirit is too strong to not be squashed one way or another, right? You either have to squash it through through drugs and alcohol, or you have to squash it through propaganda, or you physically squash it through gulags and concentration camps and right. Throughout history, those are the only, those are the only ways to do it. And mm-hmm. otherwise, with the American difference was supposed to be that we accomplished that through freedom. And yeah. I'm watching out today, and I just I'm I'm seeing our freedoms. So many people willing to turn our backs on our freedoms because they're scared of a virus that no longer looks as scary as it first did. Right, right, and that that's what we got to look at now. And okay, you know, to give everyone some slack. I, I do get really frustrated because I, I do think I'm a little, uh, you know, ahead of the curve. If I want to toot my own horn a little bit, I'm a little bit ahead of the curve. So I do see it coming, people coming around. I do see everyone like realizing, okay, you're, you know what, we should go, we should get back to work. It makes more sense to do that. We need to stop beating ourselves up and we need to stop banging our head against the wall. Let's just get back to work. Um, but you know, another thing, America is the last frontier, you know, we, we lead the world in freedom. And if we lose our freedom here, the world loses their freedom everywhere. So we have to stay the course and we have to continue to fight for freedom, just as our founding fathers did back in 1776 when they signed the Declaration of Independence. That is the number one thing, because we are literally the last hope for free man. We are the only hope for free man. We were basically for the first free men to create free market capitalism. We created the biggest boom in history of our species, in the history of our species. So, you know, we got to – it's – freedom's not free. Yeah, we're the first – we're the first, um, so I say empire, because technically, it, it, you know, the history books will look back at us and say, call us an empire. We're the yeah. first empire that was not built upon being subjects. Right, exactly. Every other, every other empire, every other culture essentially started as the people were subjects. We started throwing off that label and we started as free men and we're kind of free human beings. I apologize to the ladies out there. 
Uh, even though they didn't start here as free. So, you know, there's that argument and they're actually correct, but we kind of, right. we're, we're working right. our way there. You know, we're, we're far from perfect. Good Lord. We've we, got our own problem. Yeah, no, and I'm not saying we're perfect. I'm saying, I'm not saying we've never made mistakes, but for all intents and purposes, you know, yeah. Yeah, we did. We set down a different path, but we still had to carry the baggage from the last path, right? It's, you know, right. we inherited a lot of stuff and a lot of baggage that we still had to deal with. And, but let's talk about that because the, let's lead us to one thing as we want to end up. As these people come out of their fear and they start realizing maybe this wasn't such a, uh, oh, scare, wasn't such fear. Okay. Maybe as they come out of this Pandora, as they come out of this pandemic and they start to realize that what they believed is wasn't true. All the fear that they believed that they bought into wasn't necessarily true. I think those of us who caught on earlier are going to have to show some compassion to them because it's going to be hard for them to accept this. Absolutely. So I, I I have been pretty nasty for sure. I'm not even going to try to act like I haven't. But that was while every most people were being fed that. You know, most people were actually buying into that. Most yeah. of my friends that are now probably talking shit to people. We're buying into the same stuff they were talking shit and talk, you know. So please, yes, be nice to each other, be kind. I'm done talking shit. Let's just move forward. You know, I'm glad that everybody's uh the, the data's out there. The data's out there and people are seeing it. And I don't have to I don't have to yell like I did before. You know, I, I yeah. feel like uh right now we need to support each other. We need to embrace those people and the things that they're experiencing. Um, having to combat this, this idea that was literally bombard, like pushed into their brain, a false idea. It was, it's, for lack of a better term, it's mind control. You know, yeah. I mean, honestly. Yeah, you can go like, accidental like, mind control, right? I call it accidental mind control if you want. Right, right. right. Yeah. Like, yeah, mind control is a little tough, but I get what you're trying to say, right? I know it is hard. And, you know, and, and I speak on that from a psychological point of view, from yeah. a psychology point of view, people that understand hypnotherapy and psychology and know NLP, they know if you, if you say the same words over and over and over and over and over, you know, you know, in sales, if you ask someone to buy, you have to ask them seven times. They'll say yeah. yes on the seventh time. Yeah. And well, you also get, we've been, a lot of us have been trained since we were five years old to listen to the authority in the front of the room. And so you combine those two things and it, it's a strong psychological impact. And it's it not necessarily deliberate. It's just the the, the nature no, of the no. thing, right? Yeah, and I don't mean to say it's deliberate, but all right. So they didn't deliberately put a false idea. They yeah. deliberately pushed using psychology to push their idea of what they thought was best to do. You know what yeah. I mean? And the That's data that we used to back yeah. it ended up being not correct. And now it's right. incredibly hard for a bunch of people to back off of that because they had such they tied themselves to that morality so tightly that breaking that morality is, is going to be extremely difficult for some people because yeah, they, really, back, yeah, they were exactly. wagging their finger at their neighbors and now they're going to have to go, um, uh, sorry, I was kind of wrong. And that's going to be hard for a lot of people. Right. And that brings me right back to where I, what I was saying, like these guys are going through a lot, you know, it's, it's not a good feeling uh, to, to, uh, to, to be faced with, you know, data that's going against some very emotional stuff you know though you know we really thought we were saving lives by staying home we really yeah. did we genuinely did and and but the data shows that that's probably not the case we're probably risking more lives than than we're safe yeah in long term we probably are worldwide especially when you talk about famine in the, in the third world it's uh, you know inevitable on these type of things it's you know the un thought 200 million children might be at risk of starvation by the end of the year and that's just mm -hmm. December. Right. right. That's just December. That's not even that long from time. And so extreme poverty makes life even worse for those people. And us here in California, we're a strong, innovative people with the, you know, with the deep economy, with the deep diversified economy. But most places in the world don't have that. You know, most places in the world are deprived of, of the freedoms and the and the resources that we have here in California. And I think uh, we are blessed in a sense, blessed yeah. to be here, despite kind of our lack of leadership at the moment. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, hopefully we can elect some some better, for more forward-thinking leaders in the future. All right. Robert, it was great having you here. Congratulations on your first, uh, is your first podcast type appearance? Is, I, remember, like that? Thank you. I, I appreciate you. <laughs> Congratulations. It's, 
Well, this is what Libertarian Counterpoint, the community podcast thing is all about. It's giving people like you, Libertarians and other community members, a chance to get a voice, start learning, start getting on their trips down the to becoming bigger and better. We want you all to outgrow this format, to be honest. If you guys know we're too big for those guys, great, we've done our job. You know, that's kind of what we feel. So thank you for coming on. And we will see you all next time. Go visit libertariancounterpoint.com. Oh, and I probably, I should have a banner for that. Hey, there it goes, libertariancounterpoint.com. Look at me, I can play director at the same time. (laughs) You guys, have a good night, and thank you.